I have two choices right now, to either study for a math exam tomorrow or to make YouTube videos. Can you guess which one I chose, mate? Chances are, if you're watching this, you're probably ugly. I mean, if you've clicked on a video titled, watch this if you're ugly, you probably believe that you are ugly. We're going to talk about beliefs and mindsets later, of course. Like any Milan video that you watch, I usually start with a story. Hi, by the way, I'm Milan. So growing up, I always had the belief that I'm not that conventionally attractive. I couldn't really figure it out, I couldn't for the life of me, but I knew for a fact that I wasn't getting enough female attention and that was probably due to the fact that I was ugly. Or at least I perceived myself to be ugly. I mean, when I look at those photos now, I'm not ugly ugly, but I'm definitely somewhere on that average range. And that's where you're probably as well. I know this is already a side note, but we're not a minute into the video. You're not really that ugly. You might need more self-awareness. What I'm trying to say to you is, you probably believe that you're a three out of 10 in terms of your facial attractiveness, but chances are you're probably a five, maybe even a six. Those guys that are really a two out of 10 and a three out of 10, they would not be watching this video. Quite frankly, they know they're fine. Which tells me, if you're watching this, you have a slight glimmer of hope, which, in reality, it's all that you need. Back to my childhood, I also forgot to say that I was a cute ass baby. I don't really remember this, but everyone around me said that, Milan, when you were a baby, you were basically a model. And in my early childhood, I ate tons of sugar, I'm talking hundreds of grams, and I had these chubby cheeks, oh Milan, you're so cute, baby. And of course, I'll put some pictures up, and then, teenagehood came and that was the worst period for my looks. I'm not trying to exaggerate here and I'm not trying to complain here. I'm glad that I went through this experience because I wouldn't be the person that I am today. At the age of 12, before my sister's 18th birthday, I started getting acne and it wasn't really small acne. No, it all started at once. When you start getting acne, you get this negative feedback loop. Why am I saying this? Well, I just remember feeling bad about my acne, as many of you probably do. And I would feel so ashamed and so bad because I had those acne that I needed to eat something in order to feel better. And of course, I would be eating snacks and especially sugary chocolate, which made the acne even worse. So of course, the more chocolate you eat, the more acne you get, the more acne you get, the more chocolate you eat. And you get into this constant spiral of just eating chocolate and getting more acne. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm not gonna lie to myself. That was a pretty tough time for me. Especially when I was 13, 14 years old, nobody had acne. And I swear, I was the only person in my generation who had acne. Maybe there were guys that had not too serious acne. They would have maybe a pimple or two and that was about it. But I swear, I'm begging for attention here. I swear, at the age of 13, 14, I was planning to get laser removal because I was just so sick of it. And this absolutely shattered my self-esteem. I would look at myself and just see these acne all over my cheeks and I wouldn't be able to do anything about it. And I would just pop them and scratch them and do every single thing that you're not supposed to do. But thank God something changed. I found self-improvement, I found dopamine detoxing, I found meditation, I found exercise, and most importantly, I found a clean diet. The clean diet is absolutely what changed the game for me. And slowly but surely, the acne started disappearing. And quite literally, I realized, okay, I don't have the acne anymore, but I'm still not that attractive. And then I decided to do some of these things that we're going to talk about in this video to improve my facial attractiveness. And now I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm a nine out of 10 Chad, but from what you can see, I've definitely improved my facial attractiveness. And that's what I want to teach you in this video. And the first absolutely essential thing that you must do in order to improve your facial attractiveness, but your body as well. Everybody else in the self-improvement community loves it. And that is clean diet and exercise. I do not want you to start going to the gym right away. I don't want you to start eating healthy, clean foods all of the time. I haven't spoken about this in a while, so I wanna reintroduce the concept, the progressive DLO technique. So in the gym, you'll learn this concept of progressively overloading, which is putting more weight or more intensity or more set, generally just making your workouts harder to do. That makes more muscle over the long term, but this is quite the reverse. So let's say we have yourself, you're eating four 
fuck that, Tate. You're eating four, maybe even five unhealthy meals every single day. What I want you to do is remove one unhealthy meal this week. Next week, remove another one and replace those unhealthy McDonald's meals for maybe a salad, maybe lean chicken, potato, whatever. Just make it healthy. And with this technique of removing unhealthy foods every week or maybe even every month, you will slowly but surely make progress towards the ultimate goal of just eating healthy foods. And I know I'll sound like a dick here by saying, I eat healthy foods exclusively. And I remember when I would be watching those YouTubers and they would say, oh yeah, I only eat healthy foods. I would be so upset, like, how do you do that, G? I cannot handle eating lettuce. How do you only eat healthy foods? And another thing I want to tell you is, Find the healthy foods that you actually enjoy. My diet is not perfect. It's not perfect for a lot of people, but it is perfect for me. I enjoy every single meal in my diet. Maybe you like the same meals as me. If you do, you can watch that video. Another crucial component is exercise. As I've said, I don't want you to go to the gym six times a week for two hours. That's way too much work. You have to set the bar low for yourself. and. This isn't progressive deload, this is progressive overload. You maybe start with those 20 minute chest workouts or 10 minute tab workouts. That's how I started my fitness journey, because going to the gym was just too intimidating for me. I couldn't imagine the gym like, oh there's so many people that lift weights and they're all on steroids and they're all mean of course. It's not really like that. Most people at the gym are quite friendly, if you didn't know. But what I want you to do. You may do 20 push-ups, you may do 30 push-ups, but you will eventually get to this point where push-ups really don't do anything for you. And then it's the time to go to the gym. When you do start going to the gym, you can go for five times a week. And Jack from CEO of Testosterone said it best. If you do need a program, type on Google five days a week training split do any of them because when you are a beginner you're going to get muscle quite easily so even if you have form even if you don't eat a ton of protein you're still going to get the benefits and the results of exercising but of course it would be ideal for you to have the right form to eat a healthy diet don't be focused on that focus on building the good habits another thing that you should be probably doing right now is having the right tongue posture. You may have heard of this concept because you've been constantly researching how to improve your jawline and generally how to improve your facial attractiveness. But if you're not aware, mewing is the act of pressing your tongue up against the roof of your mouth and not just the front end of the tongue, but the back end as well. <laughs> this is gonna sound sus G. If you were to look inside of my mouth, of course, when I'm not talking, you will see that my entire tongue is like this. It's fully and utterly up against the roof of my mouth. If you wanna be sure if you have the right tongue posture, just say the word sing and hold the G, meanwhile putting the front end up against the roof of your mouth. So it would look like this. Sing. Of course, my jaw is a bit more developed. Yours may not look like that, but mewing is a long process. I don't want you to think that mewing is something that happens overnight and tomorrow you'll wake up with giga chat level jawline with angles and stuff. I mewed seriously for quite a while now, for a few months to say the least. And yes, I've seen results. I've seen the cheeks go up and all that stuff, but also to see significant results it will probably take years. So this is not a quick fix. It is a healthy habit that you should start doing. And the last thing, you may be disappointed because there wasn't enough stuff in this video and there wasn't enough information, but this one, it deserves its own video. Let's talk about grooming and haircuts. So I'll start from the top and finish at the bottom. When it comes to your haircut, it has to suit your face shape. I've had immense struggle with this and I would say the best thing to do is to find a model that kind of looks like you. It doesn't have to be identical, but what is essential is that he has the same face shape as you. And quite frankly, you should copy his hairstyle because if it looks good on him, it will probably look good on you. It's kind of difficult to find a model that looks like me, for example, but if you do enough searching, you will find one. But if you're too lazy to do that, for most guys, the haircut that actually works is the fade on the side and 
a small amount of hair on top, so around 3 millimeters. I don't have a fade right now due to the fact that my face is quite long, so I just asked the barber to shave the sides. It might be difficult to go to the barbers and ask for this haircut and to do this and to do that. Find a barber that works for you. I know for me it took quite a while to find a good barber that wasn't expensive. And don't try to cut your own hair unless you're doing a complete buzz cut. The next thing I must talk about is eyebrows. Most guys don't have an idea about this. And of course I made plenty of mistakes with eyebrows, but your eyebrows should ideally look like this. They should have a slight angle and they shouldn't be too long. I remember the problem with my eyebrows is they were just too long and the angle wasn't right. Of course I wasn't doing all of the stuff that I'm doing now, but what you want to do is just shave off this bit right here. You may have the chat love genetics where all of your hairs are long, so just shave that bit here and please don't have a mono brow. Nobody likes a unibrow. It just tells everyone around you that you don't care about your appearance. Another thing to do with eyebrows is make sure this last part goes up. Meanwhile, this goes down. It gives you the illusion of the slight angle and it looks more masculine. Therefore, it looks more attractive. And the last thing I wanna get into is beard. I don't wanna go into detail here because this video is long enough. If you have a full beard, if you have the ability to grow a full beard, of course, do so if it looks good on you. And if you do have a full beard, shave all of this. Meanwhile, leave around one inch here at the chin. Nobody really likes a neck beard. And of course you want to have the beard longer here than here. I think that makes sense, but if you're not able to grow a full beard like me, just do a clean shave and that will probably look the best for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would highly appreciate some feedback. And of course you can watch this video and subscribe to the channel. See you in the future, bro.